In this video we're going to look at how the numerical methods that we have met so far can be used to help problem solving. So an ad advertising company is proposing a short intensive TV campaign to promote a new household product. It has produced a mathematical model for the projected sales in the days following the start of the TV campaign. If T denotes the time in days after the start of the campaign, then the advertising company is using the notation TS of T represents the total sales of the product in the, in the interval from naught up to little t. And little s of t denotes the rate of sales measured in items per day at time t. The advertising company's model suggests that s of t will be 20t squared e to the minus 0.002t squared. The manufacturer has decided they will accept the advertising company's campaign if the rate of sales are projected to exceed 1800 for at least 25 days and the total sales between the 10th and the 40th day are projected to be greater than 80,000. So the big question is, will the manufacturer accept this, this campaign or not? So on this slide, we've just produced a simple graph of little s of t against t. And if we're looking at the condition that the rate of sales are projected to exceed 1800 for at least 25 days, we can see whether this is roughly the case or not by simply looking at the graph, putting a line across at 1800 and seeing that the little s of t is equal to 1800, somewhere around about t equals 10, and somewhere around about t equals 37. So it certainly looks as if that first condition is satisfied, but we are only working at the moment very roughly. We can actually verify these results by solving the equation s of t equals 1800 using our numerical methods. So if we want s of t to equal 1800, that means that we want 20t squared times by e to the minus 0.002t squared minus 1800 to equal naught. So let's have f of t equaling 20t squared e to the minus 0.002t squared minus 1800. The equation f of t equals naught can be rewritten as the equation t squared e to the minus 0.002 t squared equals 90. Or, in other words, t squared is 90 e to the 0.002 t squared. Or t equals the square root of 90 e to the 0.002 t squared. Now we know that we've got solutions somewhere in the area of t equals 10 and t equals 37. So we could consider the iterations t1 equals 10, tm plus 1 equals the root of 90 e to the 0.002 tn squared. And t1 equals 37, tm plus 1 equals the square root of 90e to the 0.002tn squared. And we could investigate these, inv uh, these iterations to see whether they will give us more accurate values of the roots of s of t equals 1800. If we look at the first iteration, then we obtain the values shown in the table here and we can see that the values are converging to a value of approximately 10.62. If we look at the values obtained from the second iteration, we can see that the second iteration does not converge, 
so we gain no useful information from the second iteration about the roots of S of t equals 1800. Now we saw in the previous video that newton raphson was a very useful iteration method for solving the equation f of t equals naught. So it might just be worthwhile seeing whether newton raphson is better than the iterations that we've just tried. So if you've got s of t equals 1800, then that gives us the equation as before, f of t equals naught, where f of t equals 20t squared e to the minus 0.002t squared minus 1800. So f dash t using the product rule will be 40t e to the minus 0.002t squared plus 20t squared times by minus 0.004t e to the minus 0.002t squared which can be simplified by a little bit of factorization to give 40t minus 0.08t cubed e to the minus 0.002t squared. Now we could use the newton raphson method then first of all with t naught equals 10 and tn plus 1 is equal to tn minus f of tn divided by f dash tn and that will give us the result shown in the table here which as before converges very nicely to 10.62 if we use the newton raphson iteration to try and find the second root, which we know is close to 37, then we will be using the iteration t0 equals 37, and then again tn plus 1 equals tn minus f of tn divided by f dash tn, and that gives us the values shown here. And in this case, we can see that the newton raphson method will give us the root that is close to 37. So we can see that we've got a root which is close to 36.83. So we've got the equation s of t equals 1800 has roots of t equals 10.619 and t equals 36.829. As before, we should notice that the newton raphson has given us a very rapid convergence to the roots and this is often but not always the case with the newton raphson iteration so we now know where these roots are they're namely at 10.619 and 36.829 so we can say that if t is any value between 10.62 and 36.82 then s of t is definitely bigger than 1800. So the rate of sales exceeds 1800 for more than 26.2 days. So our first condition is certainly met. We now need to consider the second condition, that the total sales between the 10th and the 40th day are projected to be greater than 80,000. Remembering that little s of t denotes the rate of sales and ts of t denotes the total sales during the interval from naught to t, we can certainly say that little s of t is the derivative of ts of t or equivalently that ts of t is the integral of little s of t. We want the total sales between the 10th and the 40th days to be greater than 80,000. The total sales between the 10th and the 40th days will be the total sales from 0 to 40 minus the total sales between 0 and 10. And that will be the area under the graph of little s of t between t equals 10 and t equals 40. And we can use the trapezium rule, 
with six trapezia, each of width five, to estimate this area. So there we've got our graph of S of T. We've said that what we're trying to do is work out the area underneath the graph between little t equals 10 and little t equals 40. And we've got the trapezium showed in there. So the total sales between t equals 10 and t equals 40 is the area of the graph. There's my table of values of little s of t. So in other words, I've got my values of y0, y1, y2, y3, y4, y5, and y6. So using the trapezium rule, I've got the area is going to be approximately a half times 5 times y0 plus 2y1 plus 2y2 plus 2y3 plus 2y4 plus 2y5 plus y6, which gives me a value of 83,028. What's more, if we look at the trapezia and the graph, the biggest difference is that one right up at the top near the maximum point. So it looks as if this value of 83,028 that we've got from the trapezium rule is probably an underestimate of the total sales between t equals 10 and t equals 40. And if we were to take a larger number of trapezia, that would certainly improve the approximation and make it clear that the total sales are predicted to be above 83,000. So we've now seen that the total sales is the area of the graph underneath the graph of S of t between t equals 10 and t equals 40. We've seen that the area under the graph between t equals 10 and t equals 40 is greater than 83,000 using the trapezium rule. So it certainly looks as if our second condition is met so that the model provided by the advertising company looks to meet the acceptance conditions stated by the manufacturer. So it looks as if the manufacturer will accept the advertising campaign. So that concludes our look at using numerical methods in a practical example.